sent into the heart of industrial and political power for a reason. Look around you. These buildings house the most precious secrets of human science, and the men that created them. The secrets they keep wash away their humanity. Who better than a woman to exhume their virtue, if any virtue remains in them at all? And if there is justice to be gained through wholesale manslaughter, we will find it here. Then we are pawns no longer. Shut up, Dume. Puppet is an isometric action-adventure developed by Kronos Digital Entertainment and published by Playmates Interactive in summer 1997. Players take the reins of cybernetically indentured assassin Lotus Abstraction to infiltrate the six corporate embassies of neoteric Los Angeles. Lotus must run and gun her way through man, machine, and mutant nightmare to reach her targets, and do it fast, before her employer liquidates her. Lotus's only friends are her trusty Trigger Mortis, the Swiss army knife of guns, and her partner Dumain, a digital wraith who can bypass any security system. With these two at her side, Lotus might just have a chance to complete her objectives and find a way to strike back at her master. Meat Puppet's main creative leads were David Sears and Max Chapman, who joined Kronos in 1995. Sears and Chapman had been working on a Tomb Raider-style title at Virgin Interactive, but became frustrated due to staff and resources being siphoned away from the project to try and prop up the disastrous FMV adventure Toonstruck. Once at Kronos, Sears and Chapman had originally hoped to create the meanest, evilest sci-fi action game ever, but eventually took Meat Puppet in a more darkly humorous direction, with marketing for the game playing up both its level of violence and cheeky 90s edge. Early previews for Meat Puppet were quick to point out similarities to Origin System's hit 1995 shooter Crusader No Remorse, with Computer Gaming World jokingly dubbing Meat Puppet Crusader No Y Chromosome, though David Sears claimed the game had entered development before Crusader hit shelves. Sears argued that Meat Puppet would stand apart from Crusader due to its advanced graphics engine, multi-tiered environments, sophisticated artificial intelligence, and industrial soundtrack. Upon release, Computer Gaming World gave Meat Puppet a highly positive review, calling it wickedly funny and brutally intense. But other reviews were far less flattering. Though praising the art direction and cyberpunk setting, most expressed frustration with the game's controls and the decision to combine timed missions with non-linear level design. PC Zone also dismissed the isometric camera and 2D graphics as dated for a contemporary action game. PC Powerplay summed up the overall critical consensus on Meat Puppet, dismissing it as a second-rate imitation of Origins Classic. The game's planned sequel was quietly shelved, and Sears and Chapman left Kronos soon after. The company would switch their focus to developing for the Sony PlayStation, eventually producing the Fear Effect series, before dissolving in 2002. Meat Puppet proudly proclaims that it keeps things simple but violent. Sometimes it's better that way. So the basics of the control system aren't hard to grasp. 
You can move around and jump with the right mouse button, shoot things or activate switches with the left, and cycle through weapons or check your message log with the keyboard. The weapons are pretty typical stuff, a machine gun, mini rockets and a flamethrower, as well as nerve gas grenades and tranquilizer darts that I barely used. The player's objectives are to enter a specific area and eliminate a target before Lotus's owner, the mysterious Martinet, gets bored and transmits a kill code. The player receives objectives via their partner Dumaine, who is also enslaved by the Martinet. Once the player completes an assassination, they'll usually have a few hours to explore the embassy. Areas are a fairly even mix of shooting, platforming and switch hunting, though certain levels focus a bit more on a specific activity than others. Some are slightly heavier on verticality and platforming, others on traps, and some on exploration and environmental obstacles. Unfortunately, the game's controls synchronise very poorly with the environment. The game uses a tile-based movement system, and its controls are not all that responsive in the middle of animations, so it's easy to overshoot your mark and run in the wrong direction, or accidentally hop off that same ledge you just leaped up to. Every time Lotus runs into something too high for her to vault, there's a bonk sound, and Lotus does an incredibly annoying unskippable shrugging animation. You then have to double click to make Lotus jump up onto it, but it's often hard to make her face the exact direction, and the game can be very finicky about the specific angle of the surface and whatnot. You often run into something, watch Lotus shrug and sigh, try to jump, watch another shrugging animation, and repeat this two or three times. Kronos seemed to be aware of this, as they added an alternate control scheme where you use the keyboard for more precise movement in platforming sequences. But it's way too awkward to be constantly switching between these two modes in the middle of exploration and combat. Combat is also not to the standard it needs to be for this sort of game. The weapons are okay, but the game's aiming reticule gets confused by pillars or large props, so when an enemy is obscured by these, it can be impossible to target them. Even more annoying is that some enemies can target and fire upon the player from off-screen. The worst are hit-scanning enemies like gun turrets, which don't do much damage but make Lotus flinch repeatedly. Another problem is that there's really no reliable way to avoid damage. Lotus can't move and shoot simultaneously, and though she can dodge and roll, these are completely useless outside of avoiding specific environmental traps. So most of the time, it's better to just stand there and snipe at things from a distance. A lot of reviews argued that Meat Puppet failed to emulate the tight controls of the Crusader games. Now, this might seem strange if you've played those games, as their controls are anything but intuitive. But Crusader's controls are clearly meant to synchronise with environmental design and enemy attack patterns. So you can roll out of cover, fire off a shotgun blast, roll back into cover to avoid return fire, and so forth. Plus, there's also the added level of tactical depth with remote bombs and destructible glass walls and all that stuff. Meat Puppet doesn't seem to have grasped this idea, so the controls are awkward, like Crusader, but also don't mesh properly with moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Speaking of moment-to-moment, -moment, the game's use of timed objectives was pretty universally reviled by critics, who pointed out that they were incongruent with its sprawling, non-linear level design. Worse, Dumaine's text updates are sometimes badly written and thus give misleading advice to the player, making them think they're going in the wrong direction when they're actually on the right course. Whilst researching the game, I noticed a lot of comments from people who said that they tried the game or its demo but couldn't figure out what to do before the timer ran out and gave up on it. I think part of the problem is that, according to the manual, the player is supposed to have access to area maps of most locations. But I couldn't find these anywhere, and there's no way to access them in-game except through rather useless fixed terminals dotted sporadically around each level. Now, I think what happened is that physical copies of the maps were meant to be included in the retail box, but comments from some people who played it at the time indicate that they never saw these, so maybe there was some foul-up with the packaging in certain regions. 
In any case, Kronos later provided a modified version of the game with the timer disabled, although this wasn't actually an officially supported patch and it seems to have a bunch of debug functions built into it. Getting back to the game's features, Kronos were quite insistent about their revolutionary artificial intelligence. Many enemies will flee, certain types will panic when confronted with fire, some can be distracted with environmental novelties, some can split apart into separate entities, and one foe can be driven berserk and start attacking everything in sight. But other than these gimmicks, there's nothing especially impressive. Enemies playing dead or being knocked down and gaining temporary invulnerability is incredibly overused. I guess it does encourage the player to use different types of weapons for specific targets, but it gets very annoying watching this happen over and over again. There are a few instances in which you can make use of the environment to bait enemies into their own traps, but the game is so easy that there's no real need for this unless you've run out of ammunition. Overall, I found Meat Puppet's gameplay to be pretty uninspiring, mediocre at best even by 1997 standards. It's not that you're never having fun in the game. There are moments when you're bathing subhumans in napalm or turning toddlers to Swiss cheese that are vaguely entertaining. But there's shoddy controls, unremarkable shooting, slow and sometimes frustrating platforming, and wasted use of non-linear level design cripple the experience. Whatever its deficiencies in gameplay, Meat Puppet really shines when it comes to style. Kronos described the game as a cross between Blade Runner, Eon Flux, and La Femme Nikita, and the influence of cyberpunk and dark sci-fi are evident everywhere. Broadly speaking, there are six or seven distinct themes to the various corporate embassies of Los Angeles. The weapon factories of the anarcho-capitalist Dystopia Corporation are all about cybernetics and industrial sci-fi. The eugenics clinics evoke body horror and slaughterhouses, whilst the lions of industry draw from retro-futurist art deco. Other environments are a bit more generic, like the sewers and various warehouses and offices, but overall the game's art is definitely a strong point. Lotus herself is a mix of slinky spy and sexy goth girl, but as with her partner Dumaine, her design is tinged with elements of SNM and bondage gear, representing their degradation and enslavement at the hands of the Martinet. Based on previews and the credit sequence, I think the art assets are 3D models converted to 2D sprites. A couple of reviewers called them janky or ugly, but I thought they looked very good. I suppose the visuals might have seemed very unremarkable at the time. Quake had been released by this point, and most action and adventure games had started moving to fully 3D renderers. If the footage you see here is a bit inconsistent sometimes, it's because I was constantly messing around with the resolution and brightness. The game is really quite dark by default. I think a setting of 5 or 6 usually looks fine in-game and it covers up some of the lower quality assets, but it's pretty bad for compressed YouTube footage. I put it all the way up to 7 or 8 for most of the recorded gameplay. Like many games with that 90s attitude, Meat Puppet was marketed with a heavy emphasis on the level of violence depicted. According to Moby Games, the game was placed on a list of restricted media by Germany's BPJM, which is essentially a federal censor. I don't know the specific content that triggered this decision, but I assume the scene where you pistol whip a giant fetus and then roll it into a meat grinder probably helped. Personally, I don't think the average player will find any of the gore particularly exciting, and it's pretty tame and cartoonish compared to what you can see in mainstream titles today. Meat Puppet also made use of pre-rendered cutscenes for bosses and important story points. These are okay by 90s standards. They're quite dark and low resolution, but they go for a more realistic style than some of the other stuff coming out at the time. Disappointingly, there's no outro movie for defeating the final boss, just a few unvoiced lines of text and the end credits. 
There's an early cinematic trailer for Meat Puppet that seems to use footage that I never saw in game and couldn't find any trace of in the game files or CD. Most notable are a few clips of some sort of mechanical enemy that I assume was meant to be a boss encounter but got cut before release. The movies are a nice way of moving the story along, although the sound mixing isn't very good and some are a bit heavy on exposition. I also have a sneaking suspicion that several dialogues involving Lotus are actually cobbled together from the same recording sessions. There are several points at which she seems to be repeating the exact same lines from earlier conversations, making me wonder if they changed the script after her VA had already left or they lost the audio files or something. Uh -uh. Repetitive voice acting is unfortunately a bit of a common problem in some areas. The game really needed some kind of internal check to make sure enemies wouldn't keep repeating the same combat barks. I must have heard at least a thousand times during the first three hours of the game. A couple of reviewers also commented that Meat Puppet's industrial score was similarly repetitive, saying it got very irritating after a short time. According to the credits, the music was done by Steve Hennefin, who also composed the soundtrack for notable titles like Blood Omen Legacy of Cain and GameCube cult classic Eternal Darkness. Hennefin sadly passed away in 2019. Whilst the score probably isn't exactly concert material, you have to remember that it's supposed to be looping for long periods of gameplay, so it's not meant to be too memorable or distracting. The final technical point to consider is, obviously, how do you get this game running today? Unfortunately, it's one of those titles released just after the DOS era, so there's no surefire emulation solution and it's too old for a modern OS. I tried getting it running in VirtualBox running Windows 98 SE. There were no issues installing it, but the game itself won't run. I'll admit I'm clueless about this stuff though, so maybe someone else got it working. The only two workable solutions I can confirm are either a version floating around pre-installed with PCEM and a version packaged with a Russian installer and the no timer patch. I probably shouldn't link directly to either of these as although the game is regarded as abandonware by the few people who actually remember it exists, this isn't really a formal legal state of affairs. Now both these versions have their own pros and cons, but the Russian installer is probably better overall, despite some random crashes. What does this Martinet want me for? The advertisement said Party Girl wanted for nocturnal missions. Hey, good for shits and giggles, I said. The next thing I know I'm on a killing spree. Meat Puppet's manual gives a fairly extensive backstory to the setting. It's typical dystopian sci-fi fare, with natural disasters, economic collapse, resource wars, and the rise of megacorporations to supplant traditional political systems. The game takes place in Neoteric Los Angeles, a cyberpunk megalopolis built upon the ruins of the original city. Lotus Abstraction is an operative known as a meat puppet. These meat puppets are prostitutes that have been kidnapped, drugged, mind wiped and enhanced to serve as assassins for the faceless Martinet. Lotus works with a handler or puppeteer called Dumain, who exists as a ghostly presence in cyberspace, aiding his charge when necessary and compelled to report success or failure back to his master. Failure or disobedience results in the Martinet activating the Meat Puppet's own kill signal, whilst success means a forcible mind wipe and a new target. Lotus and Dumain are ordered to assassinate the ambassadors of Los Angeles' corporate embassies, effectively the rulers of their own little corporate microstates. However, Dumain observes that Lotus Abstraction has an iron will he has never encountered before, and the two quietly start working to uncover their master's identity and turn his own killing machine against him. Meat Puppet is obviously rooted in a very serious and genuine appreciation of cyberpunk and dark sci-fi media. There are a lot of passing references to things like the colonization of space, genetic manipulation, artificial life forms infiltrating humanity, and the implications of brain-computer interfaces. 
These are all quite important to the main plot, but aren't really elaborated on, and you get the feeling that there was a much grander conspiracy at work here, beyond what you see in-game. There are also side plots confined to specific corporate embassies, like Shakespearean Parasite and Frankenstein Syndrome, that add some local colour. David Sears said that they had originally gone into the project intending it to be entirely serious and unironic, but cracked after a few months and added humorous elements. But aside from concepts like remote colonic detonation, I don't think this funny side is really all that evident in the game, beyond a heavy dose of dark humour. The only time you really notice this side to the tone is very close to the end of the game, where there's a lengthy cutscene in which a boss delivers exposition whilst loudly defecating in their own iron lung. I found this cutscene really jarring, even in a game with mutant child soldiers and murderous spinster latex nannies. I don't think this kind of crass humour added anything at all, it's just weird and distracting. I think the game's setting is very much its best feature. Even if it is fiercely derivative, it's a good backdrop for telling all kinds of different stories and dipping into a wide range of interesting topics. One part of the game that really stood out for me comes towards the end, when Lotus is running around all these cold, sterile halls of Cyclopean memory stacks. At a couple of points, she'll encounter abandoned terminals, with man-shaped silhouettes of data packets flickering in and out of corporeality. Dumain observes that these are his predecessors, puppeteers whose meat puppet partners were executed by the Martinet. Unable to anchor themselves to their partner's physical form, their consciousness has slowly fragmented and drifted away into the digital ether. All that's left is the faint afterimage of their existence, like the smoky residue of a burned out candle. A rare picture of genuine bereavement and human loss in neoteric Los Angeles. So for me, it's not the dark humour, but those hints of something deeper that made Meat Puppet worth playing. I think I really would have enjoyed Meat Puppet much more had it been an adventure game or an RPG, letting you engage with the world on a deeper level than reading terminals or watching cutscenes. But I know some of you are probably watching this because you're interested in what this game actually is, which is an isometric shooter. And I can't lie and say this is some sort of hidden gem in that respect. I'm not a huge fan of the Crusader games, but I can see where they succeeded and Meat Puppet failed. I'm quite surprised Meat Puppet never got ported to the PSX, as the control scheme could probably work quite easily on a D-pad, and there was a flood of somewhat similar titles for the system during the 90s. I assume it was too difficult to get Meat Puppet running properly on the PlayStation's hardware, or maybe it just sold so badly on PC that it was assumed it wouldn't be worth the cost of trying to port it. I guess if you're an enormous Crusader fan who'll devour anything remotely similar, then feel free to give Meat Puppet a try, but in my opinion it's just not a very fun game. Even if, like me, you love the setting and style, you'll have to put up with 12 hours of running into walls and watching that bloody shrugging animation over and over and over again. Even so, it's always a shame to see games fade into oblivion because of availability and technical issues. They say the internet never forgets, but for obscure titles like this, that's just not true, so let's hope this game does get a release on GOG one day. In the meantime, I hope this video at least means a few more people will remember Meat Puppet before it's gone for good. Surrender to the plasma.